Hi, welcome to Dreams Recycled Expert Series. I am here with Michelle Baxo, and she is a love coach and founder of the Power Love Program. So welcome, Michelle. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So I get excited because some of the, like, obviously I talk to divorcees all day about divorce and the end of relationships. And so I was excited to have you today because we're going to talk about the new relationships and all the new things that you can do and have and all the great things that are out there. Because I think, I think it's sad really that people, when you get divorced, everyone goes through that kind of slump and we go, we're never dating again. We're never getting married again. There's, I hate everyone. There's no one for me. Yeah. It's like the relationship hangover, right? I'm never drinking again. I'm never going to fall in love again. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's actually a really good way to look at it. Yeah. And th we all do it. Right. And then, and then you get to a certain point and you're like, Oh, it would be nice. Da, da, da. But you, you have a lot of fear, right? We're fearful. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about unhealthy relationships and kind of how to get out of that? You mean, okay, yeah. So, well, one of the things, great that you brought up fear, right? Because if someone has come out of an unhealthy relationship, that drives up a lot of fear, right? And, and so that would be something where we're like, I don't know if I want to do that again. I don't know if I want that again. And rightly so. I don't, you shouldn't want another unhealthy relationship. So I think it's really important that, uh, first of all, that, uh, if you've been in an unhealthy relationship, that you'd separate the difference between not wanting a relationship again and just not wanting an unhealthy relationship again, right? So that just right. in itself can help us go, oh, no, wait, I actually, and this happens all the time when I talk to people who, you know, who call and find out about finding love again, is it's like they think they don't want it, but they just don't want what they've had so far. There's lots of things they actually do want, right? Um, so that's, that's one thing that's really key. But once you actually know that you do want to prevent an unhealthy relationship from happening again, then there's some actual things that you can do starting now, even before you're in a relationship, to make sure that you're not in an unhealthy relationship again. So did you want me to dive into that? Sure, because I have to tell you, yeah. as a divorcee and as somebody who spoke to thousands of other divorcees, I mean, we often get married very, very young. And then we're in these marriages for decades, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. In fact, the average first divorce is not until nine years, which people uh -huh. tend to think people get divorced on a whim for all kinds of reasons, which is not true. Right. And so so we, most of us have been in long-term or fairly long-term marriages. Mm -hmm. And we come out, and from an awful high percentage of us, that's the only relationship we really know. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so carry on, so carry on. Yeah, well, and it's great that you were saying that too, because with long relationships as well, often they started healthy and that's something that can be really confusing too. And, and it d damages our trust in ourself and our own decision-making and selecting someone sometimes too, because we think, well, I, it started healthy. I thought it was going to be great, but then yeah, nine, 15, 20 years later, it wasn't healthy anymore. Right. So that's just, you know, something I just wanted to mention. That's really normal as well. If you're sort of in that in between it was healthy and then not healthy, or maybe it was unhealthy from the get-go, right? It's still different for, for everybody. But um, but moving forward, so the, the point is, is whatever you need to do to, sort of, to release the past, and there's lots of different ways that people do that. There's weekend intensive courses, there's coaches, there's books, there's all kinds of different things that people can do to let go of the past so that you can be free to to you know move forward in your own creation but one of the things that's the most important and what i'm going to say is so obvious but <laughs> it often doesn't happen but the first thing that really we need to do or you need to do is you need to be healthy yourself right and, and right and you, you absolutely can't go through life as a half looking for another half right it just doesn't right. work no, not, not at all. Right. And, and this is, it can be a little bit tricky because sometimes people will leave a relationship and then become reclusive. They'll do work on themselves. And I know well, for sure that's really common with women, with men, it's hit or miss. Some men do it. Some men don't. Some men are like are quick to jump into another relationship, but I, women for sure, are like I'm going on my eat, pray, love mission to find who I am and all of these things. But what can happen is you can do that and actually separate 
separate yourself from people rather than and actually become a I don't need a man, I don't need a relationship, never again. So it, it doesn't necessarily help you in creating a healthy relationship. It might feel really good, but it may not forward you if you want to create a new one. So when you're creating, you're creating your own health, one of the things that's really important is to look at your alignment. Now, people talk about alignment in a whole bunch of different ways. How I define alignment is you look at your values, the things that are super important to you, right? So you got to be clear, like what's important to you. And after a divorce is a good time to stop and look at that because likely your values got melted into someone else's values. And so right. now that you're on your own, you can go, no, well, wait, you're like now as a whatever age you are woman, what's actually important to me now? And right. That's <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. especially as women, and men do it too, though, but, you know, especially women, we become someone's wife, someone's daughter-in-law, someone's sister-in-law, someone's mom, someone's, you know, whatever. And yeah. we really do completely lose track of our identity, what we like, what we don't like, what's important to us. And it really, I agree with you, you know, it has to start there, figuring yeah. out who you are before you try and figure out who anyone else is. Totally. And I want to give you a trick for alignment. So if alignment is your having your actions and your mindset be consistent with the things that are important to you, right? So like if health's really important to you, then not only are you eating healthy and, and, and exercising and all of those sorts of things, like caring for your, for your health, but you're also thinking to yourself, oh, I love the way healthy food feels in my body, or I can't wait to move my body today. Like having the mindset with it is a really mm -hmm. big component of of having that alignment. But the trick I wanna, I wanna provide everybody with, because this is something different than how we often go about it, is rather than having your, your, your values or what's important to you be a ladder, like a ladder of priorities, top priority, bottom priority, and that's how we normally do it. Think of the things that are important to you as like a circle, like a pie. And everything, right. everything that's important to you has its own slice, they might be different sizes, like, you know, career takes up a lot of time. It maybe is a bigger slice, but you know what? Friendship is still in there, even if it's a small slice, right? right. And when we look at it that way, we're always touching on everything. It doesn't have to be equal. It doesn't have to be perfect balance, but you're touching on everything. Everything's equally important, which is way better than the latter approach, which means we only focus on the top two things and everything else is procrastinated until... We yeah. feel like we have lost our sense of ourselves, right? Um, right, right. And I think people, you know, as a life coach here, I think people lose track of that. I, I have this analogy yeah. I use and people go, uh, <laughs> but I would say it's like a pie, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter how good the eight slices of the pie are if the two are rotten, right? You oh, don't yeah. need it. <laughs> <laughs> So when you attend to, like you said, all the different pieces of the pie, maybe not equally, but they all need to be attended to, yeah. then everything falls into place. And I, I like your ladder analogy because I get that. That doesn't work. Totally. But it's what we do usually, right? It's like, oh, well, like the urgent stuff, the urgent, the or someone's bugging you for like your boss is on you so that stuff is what gets all your time and energy and then that's where we we just simply start becoming depleted men women all of us it it, it it's a, it's important that we're well-rounded right so then right. once we're well-rounded then it, then we got to look at okay select this is again it's going to sound so obvious but we often don't do it which is selecting a healthy person a healthy partner mm -hmm. and this becomes super challenging especially for those of us who have codependent tendencies what and it, you could be on either side of it right like I know I'm someone who is prone to because I like to help people but so right. just has me be yeah. a coach I also really had to get responsible for wanting to fix people in relationships or choosing people who wanted to be fixed or who needed me or you had a lot of potential or you yeah. know or or were like the bad boys who were kind of messed up but it was still super sexy to me for some reason right all of those things were unhealthy choices so when you're selecting you got to really be looking at the difference between what you what you actually want in a relationship versus what you're drawn to, what you're pulled to. Because right. what you're drawn to and pulled to is often not the healthy choice. Well, like, and also I think uh, and now's a good time to point out the other yeah. problem is with being an empath or, a, you know, somebody who has saving syndrome, as I call yeah. them, is you also tend to attract that. So if you're not somebody who is choosing 
then you get chosen. Yes. And as one of those kind of people, most likely you're chosen by somebody who has a lot of issues, addictions, um, yeah, narcissistic, sociopath, psychopath, or whatever, are drawn to you like your, you know, prey, really. Yeah, okay, that's so good. Yeah. yeah, so you have to be careful what you're putting out there as well. Yeah. Because even if you're not going after them, unbeknownst to you, they're coming after you, right? That's so you've got to be careful. That's so good. Yeah. And that's one of the things actually that I, that I have my clients look at is because it's, there's, you're right. There's two different directions. There's who you're attracted to, and there's also who you're attracting and both, both you have a say in, I mean, that's the good news. The kind of good news and bad news is you're the common denominator for, for both, no matter what direction, but there are different kinds of work and different things to be responsible for, for sure. So I, I love, <laughs> I love the way you just put it. Like sometimes you're the prey and then yeah. we fall for it. Right. But that's because we're just not taking responsibility for our own default, you know, our own default ways of being like, if it is an empath or it is someone who's, you know, a, you know, somewhat of a martyr or a helper or a fixer, uh, we've got to really own that so that it doesn't own us. Right. Right, right. Because like you said, I mean, every, and I think if anything from dealing with so many divorcees, they're, they're not always equal ends of the problem, but definitely blame is for both, right? Wow. Any demise of any relationship or any marriage yeah. always has two ends to that story and two yeah. ends of blame. And so oh. I think that's really important that people take responsibility. You know, even if their end is 25% and the other 75, you still have to take responsibility for it. Well, and it's such a gift you give yourself when you do that, right? When you mm -hmm. actually take the 20, what, even if it's the 25, even if it's the 5% responsibility, it's, it's, even if it's taking responsibility for choosing the wrong person, they did, maybe they did everything awful, but you chose that person. <laughs> like you yeah, yeah, there are 7 billion humans on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 7 billion people on this planet. You didn't have to be with them. You didn't have to. No one like, you know, cuffed you to, to that yeah. marriage, right? Um, so even when it's said, but when we do that, it's such a gift to ourselves because then we're, that's how we take our life back. That's how we get to say, and now I get to choose something different, you know, and I, you know, that's, that's, I don't think there's anything more empowering than that on the planet than to really give yourself the gift of, of responsibility and choice. Right. Okay. So let's say we're now ready to make that choice. How do we even go about starting that? Okay. Well, one is this. So if you think of, again, go back to alignment, there's the things that are important to you. And you, if you look at what that is in terms of a relationship, one thing I don't recommend that people do is to do a laundry list of, of must haves. It, you know, and people will do that even with online dating. I'm just going to say everything exactly of what I want, like as if it's a vision board and put it on my dating profile and then that mm -hmm. person's going to walk through it. I don't recommend actually doing that. I actually recommend you more look at it almost like a business, right? Like right. you want to, you want to, you want to build the, you know, fill your pipeline <laughs> uh, or your funnel with qualified leads. And I know mm -hmm. that sounds totally non-romantic or sexy to say it that way, but in the beginning, you don't want it to be too personal or too heavy or significant because this is just the, you want to be fishing in the right pond. So right. For the right pond really is people who have a similar, who have similar values. So again, you want to know what your key values are. If your religion is something that's really important to you and you want to build your life with someone of the same religion, that's your choice. So then you should be looking at people within that religion. Don't go looking right. somewhere else if that's what's really important to you. If that's right. not as important, you got to look at what is, right? right. So, so there's the values and then also the vision. So only, only be going on dates. If you want a monogamous committed relationship, you should only be going on dates with people who are also clear that they're looking for a monogamous committed relationship. Now, I don't recommend, I don't recommend committing to that person after the first date, no freaking way, <laughs> but, but at least you know that you're getting, you're spending time getting to know people where there's a possibility of the end rather than again, going towards what you're drawn to or being drawn into as you, as you brought in so brilliantly. Right. Um, yeah. so that's, that's one thing I would say to start. Yeah. And I think it's different. I think it's difficult, right? Because you, 
especially after divorce, you're not sure, right? You you go, okay, I don't want to be alone for Christmas <laughs> and all those things, and I want somebody to go to dinner with on a Friday night. But you just came out of a long-term marriage. Yeah. So so I think you're right. I think initially you've just got to figure out, okay, do you want to date casually? Do you want to date for a relationship? Or do you want to date for, you know, your next lifetime partner? Because those three things are actually really, really different. Absolutely. And the more honest you are with yourself, the better. So yeah, I agree. I, you know, I don't recommend someone who, if someone gets divorced, well, it depends because a divorce can take a full year. So you may be going through a whole lot of healing and letting go process during that time, right? So depending on where you're at by the time of the actual divorce, but I don't recommend like ending a relationship and then dating the next day. That mm -hmm. being said, it doesn't have to be a whole you know, year of, like I said, the eat, pray, love going, you know, traveling for a year to find yourself before starting either. You got to, got to just listen to, you know, listen to yourself and be clear and honest about what you want right now. So it's brilliant to, if you want to date just for the sake of just getting to know people, then mm -hmm. you want to be communicating that, you know, I'm really just looking to meet new interesting people and I'm learning about what it is that I want. And you can say that on dates. A lot of people think they can't say that stuff. It's so much better. If everyone was just really honest, like right. just imagine a world where everybody was really honest about what their actual intentions and desires were. Dating would be, it would take 99% of the drama out of dating. It would just be so easy and so much more fun. Well, and the irony of that is there's enough people in all those pools that you don't need to be dishonest. If you just yeah. go out and have fun and have sex and do whatever, yeah. there are enough other people who also want just that. That's right. And then the same with having a committed relationship. Yeah. Don't, don't lie about that or be false about that because there's enough other people who want that also. Yeah. And so be upfront with it because I think that just being honest in fact, it's a really, really attractive trait in anyone, right? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've totally. It's refreshing. It's so refreshing. And then it also takes the, um, the rejection factor out of it. So if you're just honestly honest about what it is that you want, it's giving the other person permission to just be really honest about what they want. And when those things aren't a match, it's not a rejection. It's just simply you're two pieces from a different puzzle. Mm -hmm. So then you did, it's fine. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> no well, drama, no hurts. No, and timing is everything, right? So what's right for me here and now yes. might be right for somebody else, but it might be three years from now. That's right. So, yeah. you know, so it is, it's like we all have our own journeys. It all takes us in different directions. It takes a different amount of time. Yep. But we can only kind of operate in the here and now, what we want here and now, and see who that aligns with in the here and now. Yeah, definitely. And I think that leads into, you know, one of the things I know we wanted to touch on was boundaries. And, I love um, boundaries. Oh my gosh, me I too. I have enough of them. <laughs> and, you know, and it's interesting the difference between men and women. We can really learn from each other. When you actually mesh in the strengths of men and the strengths of women when it comes to boundaries, you've got this like, perfect recipe for healthy boundaries. So what men are, I find are really strong at is men are actually really strong. The whole pie idea of having, um, you know, everything is a different, a different priority and they're all important. Men are actually really good at that. And they're really good at, um, just assuming that it's going to be touched on, taken care of. So for example, like, let's say, um, a man and what, so let's say, um, I'm planning a date with a, with a man and he has to go and I say, you know, let's go, do you want to go for a date uh, tonight at seven? And he, he's going to the gym at seven. He would easily just say, well, I'm going to the gym at seven, but I can meet you at nine. That right. would be like totally normal for a man to say. Whereas more commonly a woman might, go, might be internally be going, oh gosh, I really want to see this guy, but I'm supposed to go to the gym. I don't want to lose, you know, I don't want to compromise who I am, but I also really like, I really want to see, I don't want to blow it with this guy. Is he going to think that I'm rejecting him? Blah, 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 and we do this whole thing, right? So for right. women, take a page from the man's book and just say, I'm going to the gym. How about nine? <laughs> and it's like, 
clear, it's easy, it's crisp. Because we're people pleasers, right? We yeah. want to, you know, bend over backwards to the point that we damage ourselves in the process. Yeah, and what happens is, first of all, it's not sexy to do that. It's actually not attractive. It, it's what makes us seem more desperate than we actually are. And then <laughs> secondly, because we're not, we're just trying to be helpful. We're very good at being accommodating. We're, you know, we're... Whether we're mothers or not, we're, that's kind of in us to do that, right? We have the capacity, and it's a strength. It is a very big strength, but the problem is, is then we become resentful. We start losing ourselves, and we're giving away our power. We're actually letting somebody else determine whether we're in alignment with ourselves or not. And when we do that, that is when we, that's when we become unhealthy. That's when the relationship becomes unhealthy. That's when we fall out of love. That's when we don't want sex anymore. Like all kinds of things start happening all because we didn't just say, I'm going to the gym at that time. How about later? Right. <laughs> right? right. But yeah, no, that's really, really interesting. So I talk a lot about withholding, right? Mm. At the end of a marriage. And that, that kind of is a symptom of the withholding disease, right? Yeah. That yeah. you, you know, you say that you're going to the gym at nine and now I, I could have said I'll do it, but now I'm not going to say I'll do it, right? That's right. And so, so one person backs off and then the other person backs off and it, it becomes this kind of war of attrition to you both can't stand each other. That's right, yeah. And, you know, and one of the things I know that um, – I mean, I know people watching aren't necessarily in their next relationship, but sometimes getting a little sneak peek into uh, some healthy strategies in a relationship will help you with the choices that you make now. So I just want to give, if you don't mind, just give a little yeah, wink. absolutely. I'd, I'd love uh, to hear. So, because one of the things that, like I said, you know, men are really strong at being able to say they know the things that they need to feel good and to sort of like be generally, and this is a generalization, but they kind of know what they need to be in check. And so, so... If women take a page of that, but men, so what, where women are really strong is women will think of the other person. See, a woman will say, oh no, that's when you like to go to the gym, right? They're actually, we think of that stuff because that's our tendency. So if women just took a little bit more ownership of her own alignment and communicated and made those bold requests, even if it make, even if you feel like such a jerk doing it, even if you feel selfish doing it, it's not selfish because it can save a relationship. So there's no way it's selfish, right? By mm -hmm. taking a stand for your alignment. And if the man in the relationship, now this is assuming a heterosexual, but so you could just say the partner, but, but mm -hmm. if the other person, if you're also making sure that both of you are, are, it's like, it's not your job for the other person to be aligned, but you can definitely help and encourage someone to be aligned. When you know right. someone's really compromising themselves for you, you know, it, consider it your own responsibility to say, you know what, hon, no, you need this. You should go do that. Like right. go and do that. Go, go, go to your yoga, go to your thing, go out with your girlfriends, like do those things. I got this. I got the kids. I got, uh, you know, I'll, don't worry, I'll do the dishes, you go, right? And so when you've got both of those combined, it is just mm -hmm. it's the foundation, it's not the only thing to a healthy relationship, but what a strong foundation for it. And I call it, I call it compassionate communication, com-com. <laughs> it's sort of a silly way. It's like a pom-pom, yeah. but it's com-com, right? Yeah. It's, it's your, your you've got to communicate it, whether, you know, no matter how harsh it may seem, no matter how selfish it may feel, but you're doing it in a compassionate way because you're also considering the other person's alignment as well, right? So it's right. a balance of both. No, I think that would really go a long way in creating a healthy relationship, right? And it would, and at the very, very beginning of a relationship, let's say that's a white flag, right? That's a or green flag, a go flag, like, yeah, okay, yeah. this is good. This is good. Somebody cares about, you know, my alignment and my wants and needs as that's well. Right. As well. But you've got to communicate them first. And this is where women make a lot of mistakes is they want the person to just be a mind reader and just know, but it's like, you got to teach, you got to teach a man the rules to, on how to win with you for him to be able, he needs to know the rules to your game to win with you. Right. So right. got to say it first and then give him a chance to, to care, or to demonstrate. Right. Yeah, because I think the actions tell you everything you need to know, right? Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, men and women both are guilty of not paying attention to what those actions mean. 
Yes, that's true. Because it tells yeah. you if you're important, if you're cared for, if you're loved, if you're respected, if, you know, all those things. Right. And, and people, te- we do. We tend to, you know, turn a blind eye and ignore certain behaviors. You know. oh, yeah, yeah, we just don't ask. Because I would argue also a lot of the times we think that those that's what that action communicated and it's actually a misunderstanding. And so without the communication, without just saying, hey, you know, that actually really made me feel uncared for. And yeah. to give the person the opportunity to go, oh, crap, I was just, you're right. I was not thinking of you, but I do care about you. But I just wasn't thinking about you when I said that or when I did that, right? Like, oh, it's just... So many, so many juicy things can come from that. Well, and it's complicated, right? I mean, we try and like all these expert series we're doing, we're trying to encapsulate, you know, the, know. the knowledge people have in like this 30 minutes or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what we say, there's going to be people who are going to say, well, no, that wasn't the case for me or not in this scenario. And I can think of examples in my own life where what I'm saying doesn't always apply, but we just want to be looking for, and this is for any coaching I recommend people. It's like, Take the parts that can contribute to the parts of your life where it would make a difference rather than having it be a big blanket solution to anything. Because that's, I mean, that's why, and that's why there's coaches too, because it's like part of it is navigating it as lived, as you go. And that's, there is no blanket. This is what to do every time this happens, you know, answer. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what you do. So as a love coach, what do you actually do on a daily basis with your clients? Yeah, so I work with, so I work predominantly with women, occasionally men, but predominantly with women. And I work with them to remove their inner barriers so that they can attract the right person for them. So that they have, they're attracting the person that's consistent with what they actually want and build not just a healthy, but also an empowering relationship with that person that can last. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of work on from the inside, right? Because like we said, like who you're attracting and who you're attracting to, that starts with us, but then right. also navigating through the, <laughs> through the treacherous dating world, which, yeah. you know, so there's some, some support to actually navigate and bring your self-development through the dating world so that you can like have some really great options and choose, you know, choose someone who's actually a match for you and, and create the foundation of a healthy relationship. So that's, that's the work that I do. No. And that's, I mean, it's so needed. And I mean, I I think everybody has some kind of, at some point in their life, self-esteem issues, worth issues, self-love. Even even as confident ones. I always say this. I'm like, I've always been someone that you would say is confident, but holy crap. I keep wanting to swear on your podcast. I'm sorry. I'm like, crap. Holy shoot. Um, (laughs) But I, when it came to love and relationships, that's when all my insecurities came up like big time, big time, big time. So yeah, yeah, I just want to say like, even people who don't identify as insecure, it's really okay if after a divorce or, or, or even without a divorce, if you're like seriously feeling a little (laughs) lack of self-worth or confidence there. Well, no, and I think that this is true. I think when we have divorces, it doesn't matter almost if you wanted the divorce or you didn't want the divorce. Divorce yeah. really does a number on your self-worth, self-esteem, sure. men and women. Yeah. And so really taking the time to work with somebody to kind of sort that out, kind of build you back up, give yeah. you the confidence you need. Because if you make any kind of decision in life, if you do it from a place of empowerment, you're going to be better in a better place, no matter what it is, whether it's business, career, love, relationships, whatever. It's just a better place to operate from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, Michelle, what Mm -hmm. else do you, uh, like do for your clients? So you have some kind of program, yeah, well, so there's a few different ways people work with me. So I have uh, I have an eight week program. It's called Power Love, and that and that's something that people can do on their own. And if they want to upgrade to add coaching, they upgrade to add coaching. So there's the program itself, and it walks people through again the 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 the, the pre work, the inner work, the actual go, go, navigating the dating world, and then you know how to choose the right person, how to prevent self sabotage, how, how to have those conversations in the beginning of relationships. So there's this eight week program or eight module program um, that, that I've created. And then people can decide if they want to do that on their own, 
if they want to do that with some group coaching or if they want to do that with group coaching and some one-on-one -on -one, like as needed on-demand coaching as well. So everybody's a little different for how much how much of that coaching support they need. Some people just want they want the pathway and they want to run with it and other people are like I want the pathway but I want you to help me along the way too. So I offer all all degrees of it. Well, very cool. So do you have any uh, words of wisdom before we leave on finding uh, true love? Yeah, I would say, I would honestly say, like, just have it be whatever it is that you want. Have it be okay that you want it. Like, mm -hmm. enough of the judgment, enough of the I should have this or I should want that. Whatever it actually is, give yourself full permission to really want that. And when you can do that, then you can start asking for it. And then it's really pretty amazing when we're honest with ourselves and then we honestly start asking for it that it's there. It's waiting for us to just go out and grab it or for it to show up. So um, that, that's, that would be my... The thing that I think just the, the biggest valuable thing I could give people is the, is the permission to want what you want and go after it. And also, I'm going to end on a high note and say it is out there. Because yeah. my favorite thing about what I do is I've done it long enough now that people come back to me, you know, they got divorced and they went through what we talked about at the beginning, you know, I'm never getting divorced. I mean, I'm never getting married. I'm never dating. I never fall in love. And now five years later, four years later, three years later, I get a text or a message and it's like, oh my God, I'm getting married or I found yeah. a great person, I'm getting a house or I have twins or whatever. And so, so it is out there. You just have to believe and like you said, know exactly what you want moving forward. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be know exactly what you want, like what the job is or what the height is or what the, like, I know there's a lot of talk out there that to manifest, you have to be able to picture exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's, it's be clear about, about again, what your values are and what that vision is. Like, is it, you know, like, yeah. like what, What's the experience you want with that person? Mm -hmm. You know, like those things, the things that you really feel and you really remember. Well, that's and the, thing, the, and the things that lost, right? Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, you know, the way you look, looks don't last forever. Yeah. Money doesn't last forever. Your job doesn't last forever. The only constant in life is change, right? That's right. Yeah. And so when you, I agree, you focus on the things that really matter to you on a much deeper level. I think that's definitely the way to go. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I would say that's the best place people can start with, like what you said, knowing that it's out there. So like trust that it's out there and spend the time now getting clear about what it is that you actually want. Okay. Well, thank you, Michelle, so much. We're going to wrap up, but where can people find you if they're interested in learning more about you? Yeah, sure. I mean, probably the best way is like if, if, if somebody does think that they want to do work with me is just to get in contact with me, which you can do at michellebaxo.com slash love call. And you'd it'd be a booking a call with me or someone on my team. That's the easiest way to do it. But you can also just go to michellebaxo.com and, and have a little peruse there. But if you want to get in touch, definitely get in touch. And that's just forward slash love call. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and I wish you the best of luck with you and all your clients. So thank, thank you, you so much. Mwah. Thanks.